The school I went to never showed me how to be wealthy. In fact, most of the skills that I learned at that school actually showed me how to be broke. In today's video, I'm gonna explain the 10 behaviors that actually make us broke as we move forward with our lives. Now, there's not a huge difference between people that end up financially free and in a great financial position and people that end up unfortunately broke and on the pension or some sort of government assistance. And I think these 10 things really map out the differences between what wealthy people end up doing with their time and their money and their education versus people that end up in a financial position that they feel like they don't have any control over, but really it's just a series of steps over a long-term period of time. Now, the very first thing I believe is actually this concept of paying yourself first. Now, paying yourself first really refers to looking at where you are right now financially, whether you're earning 200 bucks a week or $20,000 a week, we all have fixed costs in our lives which are part of our budget, as well as the variable variable costs in our lives like the money that we actually spend week to week on those discretionary items. Now, what I did a long, long, long time ago after I read Rich Dad Poor Dad was sit down and really go Based on my current position right now, what are the fixed costs, what are the variable costs in my life that I wanna have, and what is my week-to-week -week income? And what I decided to do is, every single week since I read that book, pay myself a little bit first. Now, when I was only earning 500 bucks a week, I wasn't able to pay myself much. I think I was paying about $50 a week. But as my income has grown over time and I've started businesses and invested in property and done things like that, the amount that I've been able to save each week has continued to go up. So paying yourself first is the absolute number one way to get yourself in a better financial position in the future and not paying yourself first is by far the biggest way that you can guarantee you're gonna end up on some sort of assistance in the future or not in a great position. Now, the reason this is so powerful is we all have costs in our life. Now, when you're single, um, and you're just living at home, the costs in your life are very, very low. And as you go into that stage of life where you buy homes, have families or start businesses, those costs in your life can go up sometimes dramatically. But as a rule, always paying yourself first means that you've got a slush fund sitting there in savings and money that you can invest into other income producing assets over time so that long term you get yourself in a much, much stronger financial position. Now. The second thing that I wanted to talk, and this is the biggest thing that separates people that end up in a great financial position versus people that don't, and that is not investing. Now, investing in the short term when you've got no money is investing in your own education. And as we grow financially, you then take that money that you're paying yourself first and find something to invest in. That could be a business, it could be property, it could be shares, it could be crypto, it could be commodities, whatever your thing is and whatever your niche is that you're gonna specialize in, it's so important to invest and not investing, you know, you just can't save your way to financial freedom over a lifetime. Now, the government's trying to make us do this by putting money into super, but they're saying that even the super funds in you know 40 years time from now aren't gonna have enough money in there to accurate, adequately look after the people in the Australian population. So I think the third thing and another very, very important thing is buying shit you don't need. Now, I know that all of us, particularly those of us living in Sydney and Melbourne, want to keep up with the Joneses or want to be seen to be keeping up with the Joneses. But one thing that I did with my wife is I delayed my gratification on a lot of the material purchases in our life. So we rented really basic places while we started to invest in property. We bought very, very affordable basic homes at the start of our journey and sort of cleaned those properties up and then moved on from there. But buying shit you don't need to try and keep up with people that you don't care about is just absolutely insane. And what I'm talking about here is, you know, the cars, the houses, the rental properties, the holidays, the toys that you just don't need. Now, smart people or smart investors accumulate assets at the start of their journey. And then if they do switch to the toys lifestyle phase in the future, they're doing it and buying it with somebody else's money. So be aware that buying shit you don't need, which is what so many people do, 
is the number one sure way of just ending up broke and ending up in a position that you ultimately don't want to be long term. Now, that sort of um, goes into part four. I'm a huge believer of not touching these things personally until you're in a financial position where you can comfortably support it. Now, that's credit cards, that's car loans, that's personal loans. You don't need these things in your life if you're living within your means and if you're living within your means and paying yourself first, then you're going to have a surplus where you can actually start investing in other asset classes to make you money. Now, it's not always the funnest way to do it. You know, sometimes buying that credit card or using Afterpay or getting that car loan so that you've got that sick ride is all like temporary gratification. but. If you can delay that gratification over time and chase what it is that you want most and not what you want at the moment, then you can be in a much, much better position. But chasing these things throughout your lifetime and your life cycle is going to make you broke, especially if you're not paying yourself first and investing money. Now, the fifth thing that I see that makes so many people broke is short-term thinking. Now, I'm just going to draw a little brain there. Uh, short-term thinking is the way that we've been designed to think as humans in some ways. I suppose that lizard survival brain is always in that short-term fight or flight mode or you know, looking to walk away from threats, but short-term thinking is absolutely deadly if you wanna be in a strong financial position. If you wanna end up broke, then short-term thinking is what you should continue to do, but short-term thinking is, again, doing these things above as well as not focusing on your education, not sitting down on your own or with your partner and designing a plan for your future. Sure. Now, I'm not saying that you should not be 100% fully engaged in the present moment and living your life on purpose right now. But what I'm saying is that if you only do that, and you don't have a long-term strategic plan for your future in terms of your money, then unfortunately, you know, money's just gonna keep going out the door and you're never gonna get into that financial position where you have choices and the ability to live 100% in the moment without fear for the rest of your life. So short-term thinking cripples the ability to end up in a great financial position and the difference between all of the successful investors and business people that I've talked to over the last 10 years and the people that are still getting average results in their lives financially is this short-term or long-term thinking. Now that kind of leads me into this next thing and that's no plan. Now it's so nice at different stages of your life to just be 100% thinking about what's immediately in front of you but I think when we're talking about planning, we're really talking about having an idea about your next immediate step, where you would like to see yourself financially in 12 months as well as where you would like to be maybe in 15 years time. Now if those questions are difficult for you to answer right now, it's because you haven't spent enough time on this planning component. Now, I think planning is absolutely vital to not end up broke in the future. So if you don't have a plan for the next 15 years, just take this one and that is try and replace yours or your partner's combined or individual annual salary as quickly as you possibly can. So imagine tomorrow you woke up and you didn't have to go to work anymore because your salary was getting paid to you for the rest of your life every single week without you having to get out of bed. Now, that's what planning can do for you and I truly believe that if you're in an average position with a wage between fifty dollars and $100,000, you can create a plan that within 15 years from now, you should have replaced your income and a lot of people do that a lot quicker than that now. There's no such thing as a get rich quick thing and that's why short-term planning is so deadly and that's why those people that are looking to get rich quick never end up doing it. But if you've got the right plan in place, you can end up in an incredible position. It might take a bit longer than you expect, but at least you get to where you wanna be. And the reality is you're gonna end up somewhere in the future. You might as well end up where you wanna be financially at that time as well. Now, the seventh thing I wanted to touch on now is when people stop learning. Now, the cool thing about you guys watching this today is that obviously you're committed to learning because you're watching something like this on YouTube as opposed to doing something else right now. But when people stop learning, their income goes like this.
Now that's okay if you want to be an average income earner that has to work for the next 50 or 60 years to end up on a government pension, but for me personally, that is the complete opposite of the life that I want to live. So when you stop learning, you stop increasing your ability to go to that next level. Now, you could be in a great financial position right now, you could be in an average financial position. The difference between people that get to a great financial position is a consistent approach to learning, whether that's podcasts, videos, books, or experience. The people that I've met that are in the best financial positions are constantly learning and growing as a person. I heard something insane that like really made me feel uneasy recently, and that was that less than less than 10% of people that finish a university degree in Australia or America read more than one book per year after they finish university. Now, that just absolutely blew my mind that the average person is getting educated from what they're seeing on TV or the news, which is selling boom or bust, doom or gloom, versus taking control of that learning from the people that are in the position that they would like to be in and then replicating that. Now, I was at a Tony Robbins and a Gary Vanderchuk event recently and Tony said that success leaves clues. So there's absolutely no reason in the world that you have to go out and reinvent the wheel if you're trying to end up in a great financial position in the future. You can look at people that have done it themselves before and replicate what they've done. Now, that takes me into the eighth thing and that is making shit investment decisions. Now, there's so many people, I'm sure you know somebody in your life that has either made or lost money in property, in cryptocurrency, in stocks, in commodities, in whatever else people do, businesses as well. Now, shit investments are a surefire way to end up in a poor financial position or even end up broke in the future. So. What I find with a lot of amateur investors or people looking to just start out this journey is that they want to try everything. They like the idea of doing a business, property, shares, crypto, whatever it is, and because they don't understand any of those things properly, they can easily make mistakes. Now, as somebody who personally focuses on business as well as property, for myself and my clients, I've bought over $350 million worth of property now. So I have experience in those two spaces. Shit investments when I talk to people all the time that have done really, really badly um, are just a surefire way to put everything on hold in your life. So it's better to not own any investments in my opinion than to go out there and do something wrong. Now, from a property perspective, if you buy great properties in great locations at the right time of the property cycle, you and your family can do really well long term. And I was actually reading Tony Robbins' book um, recently as well, Unshakable, and what he talked about after researching um, a huge amount of the biggest hedge fund managers around the world for a long term period of time and then looking at their data is that from a share market perspective, I think it was something like 90 8% of the, like some crazy number, like 98% of the hedge funds around the world have actually done worse than the average index performance in the stock market over the last 30 years. Now, what that really means is that the index is when you just go out and buy every single stock in the ASX, which is the Australian exchange, or every single stock in the S&P 500, which is the American, and you get a little bit of everything so the averages work out. Now, the best hedge funds in the world couldn't beat the average index on average over a 10-year period, and so many people go out and pay these managers huge amounts of money to get really, really, really poor returns. So. Bad investments is a surefire way to end up in a worse financial position in the future and to give yourself a lot of headaches as you go through that. Now the ninth thing that I wanted to talk about is trying to save your way to financial freedom. Now, saving is absolutely vital and extremely important with everything that you decide to do in your future. Whether you're saving for your own homes, saving for a car, paying off debt, investing that money from a saving perspective or just giving yourself a nice healthy savings buffer. Savings is absolutely vital to everything that you want to achieve financially, but 
you cannot save your way to financial freedom because of inflation and because the value of money is always going down and because wages are generally over the long term increasing over a 10, 20, 30 year period, it's very, very, very difficult to save your way. And that's why people take a proportion of what they earn and they invest that money because investing that money enables you to leverage or compound the gains over time. Now, what I really mean there is, let's say that you had $50,000 sitting in your bank account today and you were just saving that money. So at the end of 12 month period, your $50,000 with no return is still $50,000, but the value of that money might have gone down by 2% because of inflation over that time. Now, let's say that you had $50,000, and I'm just gonna do really, really round numbers here for ease of conversation. So let's say you had $50,000 and you were able to find yourself in the stock market or in something else, a 5% return over that 12 month period, your $50,000 at the end of the 12 month period is now worth $55,000. So by investing that money in the right asset at the right time, you're now $5,000 better off just in one year than you would be. Let's say you took that $50,000 and you went out there and you bought a $400,000 property. So the cool thing about property, I suppose, when property prices you know, over the long term increase in value is you can leverage that money. So you're effectively taking that $50,000, bought the $400,000 asset, and let's say that asset grows in value by 5% in the first year. So you've taken 50 grand out of your own pocket, you put it into a $400,000 property, that's grown by 5%. Your property is now worth $420,000, or the equity in the property that you've made, or the return on that property that you've made in that year has been $20,000. Now, if you think about that versus just saving your money, it's very, very difficult to compete with somebody who regularly invests over time with somebody who just tries to save their way to financial freedom. Now, obviously stocks, properties, businesses go up and down. That's the cycle and that's why a lot of people get hurt by buying shit investments at the wrong time. But the reality is if you're strategic and you understand that sort of stuff, then you can do really, really well long term. Now, the 10th thing that I wanted to talk about is um, misery loving company, I suppose. And what I'm really trying to say there is just hanging out with broke people all the time. Now, it's a really, really difficult one because some of my best friends, some of the people that I grew up with are absolutely broke and I can't see that ever changing in this lifetime. And that's completely cool. Like we laugh about that sort of stuff together and Some of my best friends, some of my family are just never gonna make huge amounts of money and they're never gonna get their head around investing and that is completely fine. I'm not talking about getting rid of the people that you love in your life, that love you, that have your back and support you no matter what, but what I'm talking about is hanging out with broke people outside of that core circle. So, you know, that's your core circle. They're always gonna be there and you always want them to be there, but Outside of that core circle, you've got the ability to hang out with different types of people. Now, hanging out with people that are broke all of the time, if you wanna get yourself into a financially free or better financial position, is just a really sure way of actually doing nothing because for some reason as humans, we like to fit in with the community that we are a part of and if the community that you're a part of has an average annual salary of $50,000, Harvard researchers suggested that, you know, if you're hanging around that community long term, your personal salary will be within 10 to 20 percent of that community. And as you move outside of that range, um, like the social dynamics of the community start to shift a little bit, and sometimes people will move towards you or away from you. But hanging out with people that are broke is just a surefire way of not developing, not growing, not getting different ideas, and not having people around you that are actively moving out of where they are right now to where they ultimately want to be in the future. So I know I've sort of ranted a little bit today and I'm not saying go out there and cut your friends or go out there and sell your car or do any of that crazy stuff. All I'm saying is that there's behaviors that wealthy people do and there's behaviors that 
people that don't end up in a great financial position do regularly. And it's important to be aware of those things and then to strategically start deciding which areas of your life you can improve on and start doing better with. So if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. I really appreciate your time and attention today and can't wait to do the next video with you. See ya.